get the reprieve from the you know, energy out, and then you can step back in. Um, or the extended exhales where you're actually downplaying your nervous system so you can relax a little bit. So then you can go back into the, you know, the war zone, if you will, and then have a little bit of a reprieve. Hi, welcome to the Judy Terrell Show, where I explore topics intended to optimize everybody 50, 60, 70, and above. I know what I'm supposed to do to follow my eating plan, but I find I can't get myself to do it consistently. So I know what to do, but I'm watching myself go off it over and over again. But so, you know, I, in my mind, like all I have to do is I just have to get myself to be able to follow it. Does this sound familiar? Do you say this to yourself? Well, then you are in the right place. Welcome everybody. This is episode number six in my six part series that I'm doing on the most common ways, patterns that in my clients, I have recognized that lead them to not be able to follow their plan, even they, though they know what to do. And I'm identifying each of these habit patterns or thinking patterns, and then giving you specific tools to interrupt or replace that habit pattern. Welcome everybody. I am health coach Judy Terrell. I am a nationally board certified health coach. I have a master's degree in counseling psychology and I specialize in the behaviors of addiction. I've been working in the fitness, weight loss and health field for over 40 years. And I have, I work one-on-one -on -one with clients day in and day out. And I've identified the most common patterns that have my clients say to me after I've designed them, the, the program for them individualized with the you know tools I have in my office. And they say to me, okay, I follow the pro program and I got a couple good weeks in, but then you know I'm falling off. I know what to do. You told me what to do. Now I just got to get myself to do it. And I always say back to them, listen, knowing what to do is half the battle. You have to have something that's been designed for you, that's healthy, but just knowing that is not going to be the same skill set as consistently being able to execute it because there are common patterns that lead us off that that sometimes we know we're doing but we can't stop ourselves from doing or sometimes they're what I call blind spots and but they're habituated and we keep falling into the same potholes over and over again and yet some we keep saying well next time it's not going to happen and then it does all right so this is episode number six and this is my final, the top six that I, patterns I witness, and then what to do about it. And in this one, I'm addressing this specific behavior. It's eating as a way to take time out in the throw of your day. All right, we are running hot right now. You know, I have, I have everybody from new, you know, parents that have young kids at home and jobs to my retirees that, you know, they don't have to go to the job anymore. And they'll say to me, you know, I don't know what I'm doing every day, but like I'm busy. <laughs> and that is true across the age span of the, of the clients I work with. And I work with clients from age eight to age 87 right now. All right. So we are running hot. We are busy. We are filling our days with, they're filled, you know, and Honestly, I think most of us are, we have so much to do in our days that there aren't enough hours to fill it all, you know, to fit it all. And hence the new kind of cultural situation that we're all in, regardless of our age. It's like, and if you don't have enough time in a single day to do all that you have to do in your day, what you're responsible for, um, then you're going to look for little outs for giving yourself like two minutes to yourself that are, is like kind of giving back to yourself versus the constant energy out. And that is the pattern that I'm talking about right now because many of my clients, food is the thing that they will turn to as an energy back in because they can throw it in the crack of a day, you know, be getting gas and then running into um, a convenient mart that's attached to the gas station and then picking up you know, something that's a, you know, a fun food or a hedonistic food or something that's going to be entertaining or make them feel good. They're not hungry, but they're, but they're on their way from one thing into the next thing. And they just want like two seconds to, that's for something that's going to make them like feel good, a little relief from all the sense of responsibility that we have going on in a day. Right? So that is this behavior, that pattern that I recognize. And I'm going to tell you right now, you know, if you are using the food as the, you know, kind of time out, once, twice, it could be multiple times a day. Um, it's working to give you that two second, you know, or four minute, you know, reprieve from all that you have to do. 
And that's what people are missing. It's actually functioning to do that, but it's got the negative, you know, side effects of weight gain and, and health issues. Um, so, you know, we need to have a, some other options that are readily available, but you, in order for you to come up with what those options are, you have to understand what is that food behavior doing for you in that moment, especially if, if you're not hungry, because most of the clients who are doing this, they'll say, I'm not, I wasn't even hungry, you know, but upon some sleuthing, you know, we discovered that it was like, it was something to do to kind of break up the day. Right? And all the sense of output that we have to put in. Now, I want to give you a little neuro, um, psychology or neuro, actually neurobiology, um, information that's going to help you with this. So, you know, everyone knows about circadian rhythm, a 24 hour rhythm. We have to have a certain amount. There's the sunlight, the daylight, um, sleep cycles, you know, on a 24 hour cycle, our hormones, we, you know, um, wax and wane. There's cycles of hormones that go with the 24 hours. Okay, we all know that, that's called circadian rhythm. But what we, many of us don't know is that we have what's called duodenal rhythms, which are less than 24 hours, they're within the 24 hours, and they have their cycles on every day, we go through these, and our brains can, they, they can focus in on something for a cycle of 90 minutes. And then, if you don't want productivity to go down, they, we need to kind of step away it doesn't have to be stepping away for an hour or even, you know, 30 minutes, but we need to, you need to step out of the brain focus, give it a little reprieve to kind of like compartmentalize, rejuvenate a little bit, and then be able to go back to be able to have the same level of productivity and to be able to keep, you know, going for the rest of the day. So 90 minute cycles, and then we need these little reprieves, okay? And if we don't take them, and I'm telling you right now, most of us are not taking them. Our culture isn't even built to take them. You know, we have college classes that are three hours long, seminars that are four hours long, you know, and you notice when you're in them, you start to, you know, like drift off or your attention, you know, starts to waver and you blame yourself for, you know, not having discipline or being tired or whatever. And I'm going to tell you, that's an example, an observable example of these diurnal rhythms of our ability of our brain to concentrate you know, in a consolidated way. And if we don't take like a five minute break, it doesn't have to be long, two minute break, and then be able to come back, then we're losing productivity and we're getting overwhelmed. So now if you've gone through, you know, by the time you get to two or four o'clock in the afternoon, you've run through like several of these, you know, 90 minute cycles without giving yourself the you know, the, the reprieve, the short reprieves that we need, that all builds up. And now you're going to be, you know, grabbing for something in the two to four o'clock time of the day. Food will jump in really easily because now if you're eating something, it, it, it's giving your brain like the reprieve from the focus attention. Now you're in your body, sensation, taste, you know, visual, smell, all right? That's the brain and the cognitive processing is getting a break because now you're in the sensations, the senses of your body. So it works is where I'm going. Your second50.life is my virtual platform that is designed for both men and women over 50 and 60, 70, and 80. And it includes pre-recorded video information on exercise, and how to do it, whether you're fit and in good health, or if you have bad knees, bad shoulders, a bad back, whatever. It includes information on how to eat for weight management and how to eat for health management. It includes information on the psychology of aging and what do we need to do in our heads? Because let's face it, this aging thing is not for the faint of heart. So your second50.life is a virtual platform of resources that you can access at your own leisure, but it also includes two times a month live video coaching with me so that you can bring your own individual questions and get individual coaching as well as have access to all the information on the pre-recorded videos. So please check it out because we're all in this together and we got this, but if you're having weight issues or health issues that are related to eating foods or when you're not hungry, then, then we have to find another vehicle, another, other options for what to do aside from eating, but that will still, what I call scratch that itch of needing to step out of that, you know, that focused cognitive attention. 
All right, so you see the scenario set up. So now you can say to yourself over and over again, I know I shouldn't eat at two to four o'clock. I'm not even hungry there. And yet I'm, I, I did it again. I know I just got to get myself to stop. You're never going to get yourself to stop because it's functioning to give you that brain, you know, kind of step back time out. So we have to now replace that with something else that's going to give you your brain that time out that's not food. And then you stand a fighting chance of being able to arrest that, you know, eating off your plan. All right. So you get the scenario. Many of you are going to say, I see myself in this, right? So now what can we do? And I have two things that I'm going to suggest to you that can replace, you know, the eating, but that will still get you this, you know, um, the break from the cognitive, you know, focus and then be able to step back into the rest, you know, the next part of your next 90 minute cycle, um, feeling a little bit refreshed and feeling uh, like that higher level of productivity. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to say is, you know, we need to like stop the cognitive focus. So I tell my clients schedule in two to five minute breaks once or twice or three times through like the, you know, 12 to 14 hour active day. We're talking about two minutes here, all right? And I tell people, schedule them. Like if you know you have a, a, two, a break, you know, right before lunch, let's just say, or maybe right after lunch, um, you know, in the middle of a four hour consolidated, you know, meetings, you know, you have to go to the bathroom sometimes. Um, you can say, you know, turn your screen off and take two minutes um, or, you know, like let the next meeting know I'm gonna run like one minute behind any number of creative ways, but you're going to take two to five minutes. And what you're going to do is an exercise of extended exhales. Okay. This is a yoga breath. This is when we are stressed, we have a bigger inhale and a shorter exhale. When we are relaxed, we have a smaller inhale and a longer exhale. So what we're doing is now we're going to ignite the relaxation response in our body, turn off our brains for a second, and you're going to just breathe in through your nose to the count of three. And then you're going to breathe out through your mouth to the count of six. It's as simple as that. But what it is, is a longer exhale and you're going to do five rounds, three minutes, breathe in. It's not a big breath. Make it a short breath, three and then out six. Breathe in three, breathe out six. And if you do that five times, you are now, you're not focusing your brain on cognitive processing. You're just, you're breathing in and breathing out. You're triggering the parasympathetic nervous system. You're taking yourself out of the consolidated, you know, focused mental attention on, on your responsibilities and your to do's and the cognitive brain functioning. And you will get a reprieve that will be similar in regeneration of your attention and focus that you would get from like grabbing like a handful of chocolate covered almonds. All right. But without the negative side effects of then having the you know calories and the sugar and the unhealthy options. And even if you're eating healthy, if you're not hungry, but you're just eating because that you have to, you're trying, you actually need the time out from, you know, focusing on whatever you're doing. You get up, you get up from your computer, you walk into the common area, the kitchen of your house or the kitchen of your house. And now you're eating something because that's a, it's almost like a, an acceptable excuse for getting up, you know, to take a break from, you know, whatever you're doing at your computer. Well, you don't have to be eating to give yourself the permission to just take the break, you know, get up, get away from the computer, you know, go into the living room if you're in your house and then just do a couple rounds of this extended exhale. If you're at the office, you know, just turn off your computer. You can still sit at your desk or I would encourage you to get up, even walk down the you know hallway to the bathroom and do them in the bathroom, you know, or go outside even if you have like a couple more minutes and then do the extended exhales outside. All right. That is going to, you know, be a double plus for, you know, kind of giving yourself the reprieve from that 90 minute, ex you know, focus attention, and then, you know, be able to go back, step back into the next meeting, feeling like you got a little rejuvenation, but you didn't have to use the food because you weren't hungry anyway. You were just looking for the break. Okay. Another one of my uh, tools for this is, you know, take a break. You schedule it and you say, uh, and I call this me time. Uh, you got to put some me time into your day, which is all other time, right? So the me time is you just keep a little like assignment book next to you or in your purse or whatever. It could be on a sticky note. I don't care where you write this, but you're literally going to stop whatever you're doing, you know, taking the reprieve instead of going and getting, you know, a snack, 
write it on your piece of paper, call to mind, you know, what are two things that happened today that really brought me joy, like made me smile, made me feel good? It could have been the way your daughter kissed you goodbye this morning. It could be, you know, uh, you were on, you know, walking into work and you saw somebody do something funny, you know, any there, it's like anything, you know, it could be that someone gave you a compliment and it really felt good to you. We are swimming in this out energy and this, you know, responsibilities and cognitive focus and a lot of negative, if not just energy out. And we need to just take the, the little hits of like, dopamine rush. Ooh, that made me feel good. Someone said they liked my outfit this morning. Someone commented that maybe, are you losing weight? You look great. You know, someone commented your hair color. You know, someone commented, um, you know, I saw pictures of your kid, um, and, uh, their, their, their soccer team, like one, you know, their game last night, simple little things, or you watched a news story, a feel good news story, and it did actually make you feel good. What you're doing now is you're writing it down in a little, you know, cliff note version. But in that moment, now you're getting this dopamine hit um, that makes you feel good. And you're taking a reprieve from the energy out. So you're helping your brain to now step back, kind of reprocess and compartmentalize and clean things up from the focused attention you were just giving. And then clear you up to be able to go into another next 90 minute cycle of attention. All right, everybody. These are simple hacks but they are replacing food. Many of my clients, it's like, it's a legitimate thing to step out of what you're supposed to be doing or what you have to be doing in a day to say, all right, I'm going to have a snack. No one's going to question you. Like they're like, oh, okay, like go ahead. You can have your snack and then come back. If you said, I'm going to do a little breathing break or I'm just going to, you know, I'm going to walk outside. I'm going to just sit down and I'm just going to, you know, breathe, like take in the environment, see the sun, look at the sky. There's almost like a stigma. I'm like, oh really? You need to do that? Or are you like, like I, I'm the ever ready bunny. I can keep going all the time. You need to take a break. Like don't get stuck up in that. Like catch yourself. If you do have that mentality, like if you take a break for yourself in the middle of the day, somehow you're less than you're lazy, you're slothful. Cause that I think is another barrier to actually doing the things I'm suggesting. And then you'll fall into, well, eating's okay. Like everyone accepts eating. I'm doing something, you know, I have to eat. Um, then, you know, there's a psychological stigma attached to that. You got to identify if you're a victim to that as well. All right, everybody. So you see the hacks that I gave you. It's writing down a couple things that made you feel really good that day and doing that once or twice a day in the middle of your day because you get the feel good chemicals, you get the reprieve from the, you know, energy out and then you can step back in um, or the extended exhales where you're actually downplaying your nervous system so you can relax a little bit. So then you can go back into the, you know, the war zone, if you will, and then have a little bit of a reprieve, you know, that you're, you're back now loaded up for bear. <laughs> All right, so this is the end of my series. There are six very specific reasons for why we eat when we're not hungry that makes us fall off our plan. I gave you very specific tools to address each one. So if you didn't watch the other ones, please go back and find those. I welcome you to join my platform, Your Second 50, which has, you know, eating, um, you know, um, videos for how to control, you know, psychological eating, but health issues for men and women, both over 50, but younger too can be on this, but I'm specifically addressing the 50 plus population. Um, take a look at that and, um, subscribe. Uh, it's just a library of information with very behavioral tools for all the health ills, things that Ill illnesses that ail us, as well as how to optimize ourselves as we age. Um, so thank you for joining me, everybody. We got this. I'm eating when I'm not hungry thing. And I hope to see you soon on another video. And if you'd like to have access to some of my additional resources, I can be found at Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and on my website, www.judyterrell.com.